You know, some people worry because they can't find their keys and they're rushing around their house like a mad person in the morning. Where's my keys? Where's my keys? Hmm, that's not really such a big deal. You'll find your keys. But some people find their keys, get into their car, and they don't know what to do with their keys. Now you might be worried. Stay tuned. Our guest has something to say all about that topic. Hey, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Scan FYI. Hey, Mary Beth, how are you today? Good morning, Andrea. How are you? Happy St. Patrick's Day. Oh, St. Patrick's Day. Well, that de- that really deserves a toast from yes. all of us. Happy St. Patrick's, Happy St. Patrick's Day, Patrick's everybody. Day to our Irish friends, yes. Even though our mug is not green, we have a little, we're all kind of a little green today. A little today. bit of green. A little, a little bit, bit of green, green today. So happy St. Pat's. So good morning, everyone. Uh, I would like to introduce our guest um, today. We have with us James Giuliani. He is a physical therapist and director of therapy operations at Encompass Health. So good morning, James. Thank you for being with us. Good morning, Mary Beth. Thank you for having me. Good morning, James. So we have good a very morning. Important- How are you? Good. So we have a very important topic to talk about today. Brain health. And it's Brain Health Awareness Week, actually, isn't it? Yes. This yes, entire week. that's right. Okay. <clears throat> that's right. You know what? Can I just remind everyone that um, almost a year ago, uh, when when all of this first, all of this, this COVID stuff first started, Scan did a series on uh, telehealth. Yeah. And one of my guests was James. So. Wow, well, here we are. Here we are a, a year later. So that's come just back full the, circle. The irony of this whole situation. But yes, we're sure. talking we're talking about brain health today since it is an important week. So how Absolutely. how do we start off with this? Do we? Do, I was going to say, should we talk about just overall, James? What does brain health mean, and and what should we you know associate when we hear that term? Sure. You know. You know. I think. Um, when we think about brain health, oftentimes when people think about their health or they think about their, their medical health, they think about their body, they're exercising, they think about their heart, their lungs. We don't often always think about the health of our brain as something that we need to think about, uh, no pun intended, or something that we actually have the ability to train with, just like we would train our body for strength, that we would train our body for endurance or things of that nature. Uh, it's important that as we age, and all of us are going to age, that we think about the way that we take care of our brain just the same way we take care of our body. And there are really simple ways to help do that. Uh, And the good news is a lot of it goes hand in hand. And if you're taking care of your body in a physical sense and you're exercising or you're really just moving and being mobile, that in and of itself helps take care of your brain also. So really the benefits of of moving and exercise are, are multitudinous. And one of them is brain health, which is something that I think is not always on the forefront of people's minds. Well, can we state the obvious that if you're doing all these things that are good for your body and they're good for your brain, I think it's important to remind people if you're not doing anything that's good for your body, you're also doing your brain no service either. 100%. And that's kind of where, you know, people get into that cycle of I don't feel good, so I don't do much. And then therefore I'm not doing much and then I feel worse. And then that begets that kind of negative feedback loop. And, you know, it it goes in both directions. If you take care of yourself, your brain will benefit in your body. And if you're really hesitant to do so, or maybe unsure what to do to help take care of yourself, then you'll kind of go in the opposite direction. And, you know, I think what scares a lot of people when they're home is the unknowing of what, what do I do? You know, I'm not an exerciser. I've had patients over the years that have, you know, they're maybe 80 years old in a rehab and we start to do some exercise and they say, well, I'm not an exerciser. I don't do this, but you don't have to do exercise. It's not something that needs to be an hour on the treadmill or lifting weights like Schwarzenegger. Really exercise and mobility can be as simple as for sure. Yeah. You don't have to put on your speedo and flex, um, but moving and doing simple things for your brain, you know, even things as simple as, as word games and puzzles, which we can talk about um, that makes a big difference. So for those who are hesitant and unsure of what to do, it's not always quite as scary as I think people feel it is. You don't have to get off the couch and run a marathon. Getting up and moving every couple hours throughout your day, just increasing how much you do by a little bit, that makes a, a very large difference that statistically is, is proven. 
So I think that's a good point, James. Just using the word moving versus exercising sounds yeah. way less intimidating yes. and makes you think that, you know, it's, it's something everyone is capable to, of doing. And I think that's the best way to put it. And I think as you see recommendations that come out for that sort of thing, they refer more to physical activity versus exercise. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a purposeful choice because yeah. exercise scares people. I don't want to wake up at 7 a.m. and exercise. Right. But physical activity is walking. It's going up and down your stairs. It's getting up off the couch every hour. Uh, you know, when you think about the recommendation, that's kind of the baseline. They say um, 150 minutes over a full week of physical activity. That breaks down to like just over 20 minutes a day. I think if you frame it to somebody and say, it's just 20, 25 minutes of walking, it's 20 to 25 minutes of going up and down the stairs that you can break up over your entire day. Well, then that becomes five to 10 minutes of extra activity just right. a couple times throughout the day. And that's much more manageable than I think anything else. I agree. Yeah, that's it. You know, um, well, I always say this, you know, when, when you go to the store and you see that car parked way, way off in the parking lot, well, that's probably me because that's kind of one of my like forced uh, exercise components. So Absolutely. there's a lot of things, you know, you can do little things like that, but even just walking the aisles in, in the store, people would come to the Monmouth Mall, our former home, and, you know, walk, walk the mall, but more important, yeah. like just moving, moving around your house. Moving, 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 uh, and going from the couch to the bathroom three to four more times than you would need to. Maybe you don't necessarily have to use the bathroom, but you've gotten up and you've moved. Move. Yeah. Um, you know, there are resources that I, you know, I will provide to you that people can do very simple exercises sitting down at their, their kitchen table that are beneficial. You know, any little bit of muscle pumping, any little bit of engaging the, the neurons in your body that, of course, originate in your brain will benefit the brain and will benefit the body. And you can't really overstate the importance of that. Right. So during this time with, with all this COVID stuff still happening and some people are still fairly isolated, um, how important you know, is it now more than ever to you know, engage your brain in something? And I definitely now more than ever is it critical. And it's, I think it's interesting that you and I are back a year later having a similar conversation to the telehealth information because we had talked then about how critical it is that people when they are home are moving. And now that people have spent an extended amount of time isolated, locked down, um, that takes a toll. And I'm sure we've all felt it on your physical body, on your mental state, on your emotional state and on your cognitive state. Think about when you're out and about in your day, how many individuals that you come across where you have a, a simple conversation or even an automatic, hello, how are you? Mm -hmm. That all stimulates the brain. You know, you, you gave the example of turning on the, the car. You know, how often are you doing that now? Those sort of problem solving activities of how do I get the groceries in this car? Uh, which way do I turn to get home the fastest? People are missing some of those little small elements. And it has a significant effect on the engagement of your brain. Um, just like it does when you're not seeing your family or talking to people as much as you did. And, and just like your body, as we said, your brain needs input. It needs exercise. It needs the ability to kind of uh, burn energy and burn glucose and, and operate. And that's just not happening as much when you're locked down at home. Right. But I think the important message is it doesn't have to. So by virtue of being home, you, maybe you are doing less, but you can choose to do small, similar things for your brain at home that will help kind of fend some of that off. It doesn't mean that because you're locked down, you don't have to, or you can't do anything. There are some very simple, effective things to be doing that people can take advantage of even while they're home alone. Can you give some examples? Yeah. For sure. And I think it kind of, you know, when you talk about engaging your brain and keeping it from, you know, slowing down that aging process, that runs the gamut. So it's both, you know, cognitive. So it's doing things as simple as very easy Sudoku puzzles, if that's something you're into, or mm -hmm. crossword puzzles. Even things like word searches, um, those are important. It goes into then more of your sort of emotional engagement of your brain. So the ability to make sure that you are reaching out, if you can, to family via phone, if you have the technology to kind of FaceTime. Human beings need that sort of social interaction. Clearly, we, we feel that. Uh, but that is a true thing. But then also, really, it's engaging the more kind of artful areas of your brain. Maybe you're not an artist, but you had hobbies. But doing simple things like sketching, doodling, coloring, you know, coloring right now is, is kind of a big thing for relaxation and for some people who need a little bit of a simple hobby. And those types of things go a very long way to turning your brain on. You know, the, the stimulation of the television is there, but it's not the kind of stimulation your brain needs daily. 
it's not something I'd recommend to somebody. And that's kind of like, go flip the TV on and sit there. Um, you know, there are very efficient ways, picture finds, uh, anything where you're using your hands, you're using your brain and your eyes, uh, it makes a big difference. Yeah, I think of TV as reverse stimulation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think that's, um, yeah. As I say, and James, listening to music too, you know, again, yes. you're recalling the words to songs and, and, and you know, you're engaging your brain and, and that type of activity too, which is a good thing. A hundred percent. And again, you don't have to be a musician to enjoy that. You know, the music has a very um, cognitive, emotional response to it for a lot of people. And again, you can't overstate that, the ability to listen to music, to find music that resonates with you, that maybe mm -hmm. you have certain memories for that helps you kind of think of those things. That's mm -hmm. all critical. That's a good suggestion. Yeah. Yeah. Some people say, well, I'm getting old, so this is happening. Oh, I'm getting old, so I'm naturally forgetful. But how do you, how do you, what do you, what is your thought on that? I, uh, I, I feel like I probably could write you a book on that. I have worked very much with the, the geriatric or the older population for a lot of my career. And, you know, research shows and the, the evidence shows that really we have to not always accept the consequences of aging as just something that happens to us. Yes, there are always physiologic changes that occur to your body, right? Blood flow slows down, your muscles become a little bit less elastic. However, kind of putting some things off as I'm, I'm getting old, so I can't move, or I'm forgetful, I'm just getting older. And we all say it, I say it now at my age too. Those things I think we have to try to just almost stop doing because there is a difference between what your brain will do when you age normally versus, you know, some of the more abnormal type things. Um, but we shouldn't accept that, you know, I'm older, so I can't think, or my memory is down. Um, because when we start engaging our brain with some of the activities that we just spoke about, that sort of thing helps increase that. Um, you know, Research shows, believe it or not, that as people age, what's called their crystallized intelligence or their crystallized memory, that stays the same or it grows. So as you age, the things that you've learned, the facts, the knowledge you've gained, those things don't go away. That kind of crystallized intelligence stays there. So that's why people who are in their 70s and 80s and older can still be masters at crafts. They can still be virtuosos for certain things. That skill is learned. Uh, what we see as we age, what tends to kind of maybe decrease a little bit is what they call fluid intelligence or fluid memory, where that ability to reason, solve problems, uh, make decisions in context, that kind of slows down a little bit. But again, it's one of those things that you train like your body, you train your brain. If you're working on things where you're reasoning and you're doing crosswords or you're at least coloring, you can slow that down. We don't always have to accept that I'm older, so I can't. Um, in fact, it should be the opposite. You know, you're older now, and so you can, and let's help you find the way to do that is what it comes down to. Well, if somebody's saying, well, uh, uh, oh, I'm getting old and they're 40, oh my God, what are you going to be saying by the time you're 50, 60, 70, or 80? Um, right. You just can't keep making that your excuse, right? Definitely not. And that's, you know, you hate to use the word excuse and throw it into <laughs> the, the ether, right? But that's really what it becomes is that it's an easy way for us to start that negative feedback loop that we just talked about before, it's like, oh, I'm old, I'm not doing it. And then you don't do it, so you feel older. And you're not aging, you're not older, you feel older. So it's all that emotional and mental, you know, kind of buy into that. But we've got to be able to make steps to stop that process. And I guess I think the biggest message I can just kind of put out there is those steps don't have to be earth shattering. They can be very, very simple and very interventional and very incremental. And that will make people feel better right away. Taking the few extra walks throughout the home, grabbing just 10 minutes of your time to do a puzzle or something along those lines right. makes a big difference. We don't have to accept that we're going to age abnormally or age um, badly. Aging occurs. There are some things that happen with that, but that does not mean that it's a negative thing. It doesn't mean that it has to be painful or difficult. Aging is what it is, and we can do it gracefully if you want to use that term, but we have to invest a little bit in kind of helping that happen too. Mary Beth, do you remember, was it last year? No, it wasn't last year. Oh my God. I guess the year before. We lost a year, all of us, right? We had students <laughs> yeah. from, yeah, we had students from Monmouth University participate in some of our classes. Yes. So do you remember when the, the ones who participated in some of our exercise classes, what yes. did they have to say? They were they were, um, I'll say, pleasantly surprised. 
how, um, well, shocked, okay, how a lot of our seniors were just so active. And yet, you know, they were like, wow, like I'm sweating taking this class. They just were so surprised at how, you know, engaged they were in these classes. And it's important to keep that, you know, mobility up and stay engaged and be lifelong learners, right? We, they came uh, for our classes, everything. Yep. And I think that's kind of what people start to realize as you're exposed to older adults who are active, everybody's always kind of blown away by how great Mrs. Smith looks or how much Mr. Jones walks down the street, but he's able to do that because he invested in it. Most likely, you know, some people you want to blame the genes or my knees are bad, but really there is an answer for all of those things. And it often just relates to investing in your ability to stay mobile, investing in your brain health, and that's why when you become Mr. Jones at 70, who's able to participate in an exercise class virtually, he earned that. You know, he worked towards that. And even those who maybe have jumped on to the classes as a beginner, that's even better because now they've realized this is something important to me. This is something that works for me. And they're jumping on. And I can guarantee you every single one of those individuals has felt the benefit uh, mm -hmm. of doing that. So there's always something to be said for, for doing those types of things. Well, that's what we're about, right, Mary Beth? We, we say we keep people active, healthy, and connected. Okay. And this is just one of the ways, you know, uh, so many people who are concerned with their physical body, but mm -hmm. we're saying you, you, we have to be concerned with our, with our brain as well. Um, For sure. It's not fun to have one without the other. No, you know, it's interesting. It's kind of like the, the car is running great, but there's no driver inside, right? Or, you know, <laughs> hey, the driver is, I'm good to go, but the car is shot. And I don't think that always has to be such a hard and fast rule. I think we've got to be able to invest in our driving skills and in the body of our car. Uh, and we can do that. And that's, that's the good news. That's the important message is that we don't have to age ungracefully. Um, well, you know sorry. what, to that end, so SCAN is having a, a brain health fair. And Mary Beth, do you want to share info yeah. about yeah. that? On, on right April on 8th, the topic. Yes, on April 8th, we are hosting a brain health fair and it's called Build a Bread Build a Better Brain. It's a virtual event being held on Zoom. It's from 1 to 2.30. If you go to SCAN's website, the information is there. Um, again, presentations, brain games. Um, we're going to have actually one of our presentations about is about music and memory. So again, yeah. we're addressing the, yeah. the, the uh, benefits of music. So it should be a good, a good event. That's excellent. Have, yeah, we have a good amount of people already registered, which really, really pleases us. And um, just the fact that people have really, our, our SCAN folks have done so well, you know, James, with going into our virtual classes. I mean, for a lot of them, right, Mary Beth? They had yes. never seen this before, but they, you know, pushed through and wow, yeah. they're, they're doing it. So we're very, we're very proud of all yeah. of you who are participating. That's excellent. You know, and I think, you know, when all this, this being COVID started, people were kind of intimidated by the idea of using virtual platforms. It's a, an alien thing. We'd rather be in person or rather be on the phone, but it's amazing. And I think it's a, it says a lot about the SCAN program that people are buying into jumping on these virtual programs because these resources are out there. And when we talk about things that are available to the community to help them with their mental, emotional, and physical health, these types of events are exactly what I mean. It's, it's a, you know, an hour and a half or two hour investment of time where there's been some research put into it and, a, and an easily accessed platform. And that's exactly the kind of stuff that people can jump onto and feel good about. You know, once you leave that sort of conference and you can learn something from it or a little tip or trick that'll help you sharpen your brain a little bit, that's a, a wonderful thing. And sometimes really that's all it takes. I jumped onto this great conference. I learned some new things. I'm gonna implement that into my next couple days. And that's what it takes, right? We're not forcing them into a re exercise regimen or anything else. No. Um, but that's really, really special. And that's the kind of stuff that is out there for individuals to utilize. And I just wish we could get that to everybody because I think everyone would benefit 100%. Well, thank you for saying that. We hope so too. Sure. Now, James, sure. you had mentioned some resources and that you're going to send to me, which I will share with everyone. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, we'll put all, if you want to contact uh, James from Encompass or uh, et cetera, we will put all of his uh, contact information, as we always do, on Facebook and YouTube, so you'll have no trouble reaching out to him. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, so I th any final words you want to share with us about keeping your uh, sharp? In terms of keeping your brain sharp, I just really want to just hammer home that it's uh, something you can do 
just like you would sharpen your body or strengthen your body. Take the time to invest in your brain health. You don't have to accept that you're aging badly or you don't have to accept that things are harder. Uh, our bodies age, but we can help that body do it much, much more gracefully. And it just takes the investment in ourselves. And it's a doable investment. It's not something that breaks the bank. It's not something that takes up your entire day. Right. But spend those few minutes to think about whether it's emotional investment in something, whether it's a musical creative investment, whether it's cognitive into different types of reading or puzzles, or it's physical activity. And we cannot, can't overstate the importance of moving your body, staying mobile, that will benefit your body and your brain. So the key is it's doable. We don't have to accept anything. We just need to take the small steps to make things better for our bodies and our brains. Okay, well, thank you for that. Thank you so much for being with us today. So our guest today was uh, James Giuliani from Encompass Health. He's the director of therapy operations there. Again, we'll put all his contact info out there. Sure. Okay. So remember you, everyone, Dean. if it's important to you, it's important to us. I'm Andrea Tarr, and we'll see you next time on Scan FYI. Bye everyone. Bye, Bye. Mary Beth. Good day. Thank you, James. Thank you very much. Anytime.